Standing tall in New York Harbor, the Statue of Liberty can only be viewed from a distance right now. But with Connor Knighton, we're about to get up close and personal. Last summer, architect Paul Davidson spent 10 nights inside of the Statue of Liberty. From 6 p.m. to 7 a.m., he and his team carried out a first-of-its-kind laser scan of Lady Liberty, capturing the statue's interior during the hours when it wasn't packed full of tourists. Do you look back at those 10 nights and think, oh man, I could have been doing it now during the daytime. I know. <laughs> this is like the perfect time to be surveying outside and in, for sure. We're now on our way to the Statue of Liberty. At Ellis Island and the Statue of Liberty are currently closed to all visitors, shut down due to COVID-19, which actually makes this the perfect time to debut some of Davidson's work. The images he captured during those long nights have just been turned into a virtual tour. Now, all those who can't visit in person can explore the statue online like never before. You can get into the crown and kind of view everything in 360. You can go up to the torch and, and get a view off of that. You can climb up the arm. The virtual tour includes many areas that would traditionally be off limits to visitors. Davidson's team also laser scanned every nook and cranny, and getting that data was no easy task. Really the biggest challenge for survey that this statue presents is the fact that it is never still. It's constantly moving in the wind. But when you're surveying, you want it to be static. But we were in that torch and it was probably five or, or 10 miles an hour and it was swaying really like three or four inches. It was kind of like being on a boat. The statue was meant to sway. Its flexible support system was designed by French architect Alexandre Gustave Eiffel. Perhaps you've heard of his tower in Paris. When Liberty Enlightening the World was dedicated in 1886, it was the highest structure in all of New York City, a triumph of engineering and an instant international icon. I think about the conditions under which that was done, and it was for nothing more than to celebrate democracy and freedom and liberty. Davidson has been documenting the statue as part of the National Park Service's Historic American Building Survey. The new virtual tour is just part of the project. The new scan will serve as a high-tech three-dimensional blueprint for everything from research to reconstruction, if God forbid, anything should ever happen to the statue. This is a record that has many uses down the line. If they do need to make some alterations for social distancing even, they've got a complete 3D model to map that stuff out. Whenever the statue eventually reopens, touring its tight interior spaces will likely be done very differently. But there's still something powerful about being there in person. As Davidson points out, a virtual visit is nice, but it's no substitute for the real thing. It's the visitors who circulate through the statue every day who kind of enliven the space, right? The beam that they touch every time that they go up the stairs, or the metal treads are wearing in the center from people passing through. And all those visual cues, you start to feel the presence of how many people have moved through this space for 130 years. And you can basically like reach back in history and feel something. 